Selamat siang dan selamat datang di acara Taiwan Excellence Smart City and Industry 4.0 Webinar and Business Matching. Saya Jen Veronica Tanjaya yang akan memandu acara hari ini. Acara ini diselenggarakan oleh Biro Pengembangan Perdagangan Luar Negeri Taiwan, Taitra, yang juga bekerja sama dengan Biro Perdagangan Luar Negeri Taiwan, MOA, serta didukung oleh Asosiasi Pengusaha Teknologi Informasi dan Komunikasi Nasional, APTIKNAS. Taiwan Excellence Smart City and Industry 4.0 Webinar and Business Matching Selamat siang dan selamat datang di acara Taiwan Excellence Smart City Teknologi dan Industri Smart City yang ada di Taiwan Revolusi industri keempat ini menandai serangkaian pergolakan sosial, politik, budaya, dan ekonomi yang akan berlangsung pada abad ke-21 Hal ini terjadi atas ketersediaan teknologi digital yang luas yang merupakan hasil dari revolusi industri ketiga. Pada industri keempat ini, sebagian besar revolusi didorong oleh konvergensi inovasi digital, biologis, dan fisik. Pada acara hari ini, kami akan memperkenalkan beberapa eksibitor Taiwan yang berpartisipasi dalam Taiwan Excellence Smart City and Industry 4.0 Webinar and Business Matching. Para eksibitor Taiwan ini merupakan perusahaan-perusahaan berbasis IoT yang bergerak dalam bidangnya masing-masing. Untuk memulai acara hari ini, saya ingin mengundang Bapak Fangki Christian selaku Ketua Asosiasi Pengusaha Teknologi Informasi dan Komunikasi Nasional Aptiknas Regional DKI Jakarta untuk memberikan kata-kata sambutan. Mari kita undang Bapak Fangki Christian. Hello everyone, thanks for joining this webinar. I hope you all in a good health condition. I want to thank to Taitra for having this webinar for us so we can update about the progress of Smart City and Industry 4.0 implementation in Indonesia. Please let me introduce myself. My name is Fanki Christian. My business activities in uh, PT Daya Cipta Mandiri Solusi and System Integrator Company and also PT Kota Cerdas Indonesia and media and education related to smart city, internet of things, and robotics. I am involved in Indonesia ICT Business Association or APTIKNAS as Jakarta Regional Chairman. Other association is Indonesia System Integrator and Security Association as a Vice Chairman and also Indonesia Cloud Computing Association as a Secretary General. I'm involved also in Indonesia Artificial Intelligence Society or EIS as a Vice Director for uh, Industry Relation. This is our agenda. We will talk about Indonesia Smart City and Industry 4.0 updates. As you can see, this is our President, Mr. Joko Widodo or Jokowi. On his second terms of services, he has declared DLAN. DLAN is stand for Digital Melayani or Surfing Digitally. This is his and our focus to develop, expand, and give digital capabilities in many sectors, including smart city and industry 4.0 related sectors. In Indonesia, we have standardized the smart city approach and implementation based on the standard ISO 37120, then ISO 37122, the indicator for smart city, that also has been adapted to SNI 37122-2019, and also ISO 37123, indicators for resilient cities. This is handled by BSN, National Standardization Agency of Indonesia. Based on that global standard, Indonesia government has Act Number 23-2014 that stated the government's affair put on six high priorities related to education, housing, uh, geospatial, health, and security, and social. This is as mandatory, and every smart city implementation must focus on these six priorities. Then we have basic public services, such as labor, women and children, ETC, and also customized 
based on the condition and regional culture of its location. During the COVID-19, the impact to cities has several impacts. As the first is the economic impact. Another impact is res, uh, impact of restriction. This makes lower productivities and also the revenue has dropped and the public services has changed the way they serve the public. In some big cities with crowded area with many population, they are experiencing high speed spread of COVID-19. This makes all the cities has changed their priorities. They put more budgets on handling COVID-19 pandemic issues. So I want to highlight two major cities as benchmark for the smart city projects in Indonesia. In Jakarta, we have concept of Jakarta Smart City 4.0. With this concept, City 4.0, it has citizens as the co-creators. Governments will take role as collaborator. We hope to see the collaboration between governments and people in the city, and they use open a user-driven approach, process, and operation transformation in many sectors. This is uh, this what Jakarta has done. First step is mobile first. They create uh, the government services uh, should be able easy access using a single sign-on with citizen accounts and related to the mobile payment. The citizen also co-create the services with focus on UI or UX design, seamless mobile experience. They created the live dashboard and pooling, scoring analysis to create the city brain with master data management. They also focus on a digital experience with chatbots, digital talents, product trainer, and Jackie. Jackie is a Jakarta Kini, in English, Jakarta Now. Uh, also for disability people. In for smart uh, collaboration, Jakarta Smart City has living lab, uh, startup ecosystem, future cities hackathons, and combined with collaboration ecosystem. They also open for ideas and innovation. Let's go to West Java province, one of the nearest province from Jakarta. They have Jabar digital province blueprint with put dynamics government, innovative units, one data, one map, command center, and digital public services. Since this is the central government's office of a province, they handle local or municipal governments or districts. For digital inclusive, they have a digital village program with focus on infrastructure, commerce, public services, communication, and training. They also have empowerment for digital citizenship. In innovation, they have startup center, new technology and breakthrough innovation. In collaboration, they open for many sponsor, ventures and startup tax adoption. They created the Show City 4.0 and education too. In Jabbar Digital Services, they have big data for decision support system, one data, one map, and open data. West Java Digital Services also have app. We call it Sapa Warga, the command center and cloud implementation. In improving digital citizens' lives using digital uh, technology, uh, one of the trend is digital uh, village yeah, or desa digital with focus on connectivity, literacy, business, and IoT implementation. This is the Jabbar the digital service and their application. One of the new trend now in Indonesia is what we call the internet village or digital village. As start, the common design will focus on providing connectivity uh, for internet bandwidth in Indonesia. We have almost 70 4,597 villages in Indonesia with 12,550, 548 villages still have no internet connectivity. The common design can be prepared by the village itself with their budget and share the internet services in local using the radio Wi-Fi. 
the enhancement design that we have now with the Bhakti or Cominfo uh, from the Ministry of ICT projects, the main bandwidth using the Visat IP, and they built the BTS, the tower, and people at the village can access using 4G or the radio Wi-Fi. After the internet bandwidth has been available at village, many services can be used by people. This is some pictures that show the internet village uh, implementation uh, in many villages from East uh, Sumatra, uh, West Java, Tasikmalaya, and also uh, Papua. As you can see, this is using the satellite connectivity. In digital village that supported by Bhakti Cominfo or my Ministry of ICT, the program also powered by Tokopedia, the largest online marketplace in Indonesia. So the cheap products and groceries will be available through online marketplace. And the village products will be featured as the featured products from West Java villages. They also providing a product development training center in village. Besides that, the digital village also work with some Internet of Things or IoT startup such as eVisory. This is to help people in the village can monitor their fish pond and support it by another online marketplace, Blibli. In some area, they also using the smart farming to optimizing plant growth, monitoring soil, and environment parameters. This help people to double their farming products and can plant all year round, not dependent on rain again. In big cities, we have the new Indonesia capital projects in Kalimantan Islands. The project started this year. We had launched the electronic traffic law in enforcement to support the smart city development. Until now, we have several in 12 provinces. Start from big city in each city. Atle will be good to start to support the smart city development since in many cities they already have a command center and CCTV installed to monitor the traffic condition. Now let's move forward to the industry revolution implementation progress in Indonesia. As we know, we had Making Indonesia 4.0 program introduced in 2018, and we hope the impact of the industry 4.0 for Indonesia will give us uh, revive uh, product uh, sectors, regain the net exporter uh, position, and also improve the country financial strength, enhance the government spending, enhance investment, and build robust economy and should give be Indonesia better labor market. We want making Indonesia 4.0 will take Indonesia to the top 10 economy by 2030. We had defined 10 key challenges across the industries, start from the underdeveloped up midstream industry, under leveraged geographical potential, inevitable global sustainability trends. We also have 62% of workers in small and micro enterprises, and last must have the digital infrastructure. We have a limitation in domestic funding and technologies, and we have very limited trained talents. We have limited research and development spending, only 0.1 to 0.3% of the GDP, and we don't have strong government's lead R&D or innovation center. In 2018, we don't have the comprehensive incentive related to the fourth uh, industry revolution, and we have over complicated regulations and policies. So Indonesia government has 10 national priorities defined in 2018 related to the making Indonesia 4.0. As you can see, some issues related to technologies such as uh, empower small and medium enterprises to build the national uh, nationwide digital infrastructures and upgrade the human capital related to the fourth industry revolution. In 
2018, the Ministry of Industry has tried to identify which industry has ready to implement uh, fourth industry revolution. And it showed that the textile, food and beverage, chemicals, electronics, and automotive industries have capabilities to implement ER4 compared to others. And in 2020, the government adds another two sectors, pharmacy and medical devices, that also ready for making Indonesia 4.0 program. So we have the roadmaps. We have this year to implement uh, some initiative as stated in 10 national priorities. This is our roadmap. Some immediate action has been done, such as the tech incentive, some investor uh, roadshow, upskilling and reskilling in vocational schools, and support for small and medium enterprises. In 2019, we had the Indy 4.0. Indonesia Industry 4.0 Readiness Index that help companies to measure their company of readiness to implement uh, ER4. As you can see, we have level zero until level four. The first assessment in 2019 has stated that Indonesia manufacturer industries is quite ready condition to implement industry uh, revolution 4.0 with score 2.14 and we want to increase this value from year to year in july 2019 only two companies has been awarded related to the industry in the 4.0 but in november 2020 we had 13 companies has been awarded we believe that the manufacturing index, Indonesia manufacturing index, should be better from time to time. And you can see the chart. Even in the pandemic condition, the PMI score dropped at the first month of the pandemic, came to Indonesia, is getting better by months and now steady at the level 50 and above. So we have acknowledged smart manufacturing implementation stages in Indonesia related to the industry revolution 4.0. First, start from the implementation of ERP. In some manufacturer, they will go for the second step to implement the automation. The third step should be the condition monitoring. And the fourth, more on the industrial Internet of Things. I think this is the most common implementation at this condition now until the fourth step. But some big manufacturer, they will go on robotics, number five. Some of them will explore the big data and analysis. Other also want to explore the artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Only small portion has the 3D, implement, 3D printing implementation and augmented reality still on exploration stage. We have some upcoming events. This is the on-site event that you can join, the integrated technology event 2021, with focus on smart city, water, waste, cybersecurity, fire, all in one event in 20, uh, 21 until 23rd uh, July uh, 2021. So I want to highlight how you can go for the entering Indonesia market. You should have to develop the local partnership. Even you have a focus as a importer or the principal representative. You can be also as a distributor or reseller. You need to have marketplace, yeah? one of them marketplace to penetrate. You can use the public marketplace such as uh, Tokopedia, Bukalapak, Lazada, Shopee, Blibli. You can also consider to 
work on the government's marketplace. Yeah, we have the LKPP or the e-catalog. There are also some big players in B2B marketplace. Somehow you also need to work with the association. You can work with the Aptignas, Asisindo, SCCI, Apcomindo, IoT, Cadin, EIS, many association related to the smart city and industry 4.0. You need to have also the product awareness. You can do the to join with the exhibition, seminar, webinars, yeah, and also the event. Because Indonesia should be the one of the biggest economy. Yeah? So in summary, the smart city implementation uh, takes new alignment since the pandemic with focus on the COVID-19 uh, technologies, uh, super apps and infrastructures implementation from cities to village. In making Indonesia 4.0 roadmap that has been focused on upskilling and reskilling and also uh, effort uh, to support related to the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, we hope the smart city or the smart village implementation will be growing. The smart manufacturing still will be still a big issue in some implementation related to the budget. They prefer OPEX than CAPEX. This will need strong relationship and support with the system integrators, distributor, or resellers locally. And our associations, Aptignas, Asisindo, SCCI, and EIS, we're ready to support you. Terima kasih. Sia -sia. Terima kasih Bapak Fangki Christian atas kata-kata sambutannya. Berikutnya kami akan memperkenalkan empat eksibitor Taiwan Excellence Smart City dan Industry 4.0 Webinar and Business Matching dengan produk unggulan mereka. Kita mulai dari perusahaan pertama yaitu Ever. Didirikan pada Januari 2008, Ever adalah pengembang dan produsen terkemuka di bidang teknologi edukasi dan solusi kolaborasi visual. Dengan portfolio produk yang luas, mulai dari visualizers, HD video conferencing systems, dan conference camera. Ever memiliki dampak yang baik pada cara kita berkomunikasi dan mendidik. Ever bertekad untuk memberikan solusi cerdas yang tidak hanya memenuhi kebutuhan pelanggan, tetapi juga melebihi harapan mereka. Untuk selengkapnya, mari kita persilahkan presentasi yang akan dibawakan oleh Kelly Huang, Sales Manager dari Ever. Hi everyone, Ever is a award winning brand founded in 2008 and we are a solution provider for education and a video conference and today I'm going to show you our three ladies product and let's take a look.
Hello everyone, this is Kyle from Ever. Ever is a distance learning solution provider. And besides me, it's our flexible arm visualizer. And this is our mechanical arm visualizer. It provides the detail of the material. And this is our latest product, N5. This is our new product, N5. And before I start it, I want to show you that we are number one market share in the USA. We have 20 years experience in education, distance learning, and hybrid classroom solution. Here is what you can do with our M5, such as distance learning, online teaching, remote working, and home workouts. M5 supports standard USB plug and play. It is compatible with Zoom, Skype, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams. N5 is super easy to use, it's light and designed grab and go for teacher. With nearly 4K output resolution, it can provide the students a crystal clear output video. And its three level LED light can help the student to deal with different environment. And it has wild 3A shooting area. With this rotatable head and flexible arm, it can flip the camera and shoot the teacher. And if you have further questions, feel free to visit our website and you can scan the QR code to get my email. See you soon. Bye bye. Terima kasih Ever untuk presentasinya. Selanjutnya perusahaan kedua yaitu iBase. Desain dan pembuatan produk PC industri yang kuat adalah spesialisasi dari teknologi iBase. Teknologi ini membuat produk yang berkualitas tinggi dan memberikan layanan terbaik sejak didirikan pada tahun 2000. Dan sampai sekarang telah menjadi penyedia global terkemuka untuk produk komputasi industri yang inovatif. Untuk selengkapnya mari kita persilakan presentasi yang akan dibawakan oleh Joseph Previn, Business Development dari iBest. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to iBase AIoT Smart City Computing Solution. About iBase, our core activities lies in design and manufacturing robust computing platforms. Uh, iBase was founded in the year 2000 and uh, our, we are located in uh, Taipei, Taiwan and our chairman is Mr. C.S. Lin. Uh, we are a public company, we are listed in Taipei Exchange and uh, we have employees all across the globe and uh, the total of 770 people. iBase has three manufacturing plants in Taipei, Taiwan and all our products are made 100% in Taiwan and we have the IS standard certifications. iBase has six product divisions starting with embedded computing, industrial panel PC, digital signage players, network appliances, risk platform and the last intelligent transportation. And we focus on vertical applications like military, healthcare, intelligent transportation, smart retail, smart agriculture, and various applications. Now I would like to introduce our MRD286, which is a 28.6 inch BATA panel PC. This, the key application where we use is for the passenger information system. And it is packed with Intel Atom X7 E3950 CPU or given the option of Pentium N4200 processor and this is compliant with EN5015 certification. This also comes with 1000 nits bar type panel which allows for the sunlight readable and auto dimming function and this is IP65 front panel waterproof protected and also it is anti-scattering front side glass so this can be used in railways uh, and also for the metros and so forth. Now I'd like to introduce our MPD-1000R which is our railway computer system and applications where we focus is more on the rolling stock railways. Uh, this box PC is designed for wide range operating temperature that is minus 40 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius and it's powered by Intel Atom X7 E3950 processor and also compliant with EN50155. If you could see the design, it's a fanless and ruggedized and most of the 
uh, connectors are going to be M12 as per the standards of meeting the complaint of EN50155. It also comes with onboard isolated canvas, SIM socket support, dual WWAN, and it can also add on card slots, reset functions, and not to forget it is quick accessible RTC battery is input in. The next product is our AGS 102T IoT Gateway Computer and we focus on the applications for smart factory automation. This product supports TPM 2.0 and also it is packed with Intel Atom, Pentium, Celeron processors given the options to choose. It also has GPIO 4 in and 4 out with isolation function and also it has a wide power range input starting from 9 volt to 36 volt DC and it also helps on over and under reverse voltage protection and this product has a wide operating temperature starting from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees celsius and comes with 4 RS 233 422 485 serial ports and if you can see from the picture it is pretty much rugged and fanless design so this is a perfect product that can meet for the smart automation the last one to feature is SI654N video wall signage player where we focus more on the video wall uh, signage applications. This product comes with Intel Tiger Lake platform and has the various options of CPU to choose from i3, i5, i3 and co on. And this platform supports Intel vPro technology, Intel Mars technology and supports four display output. And also comes with the utility features as iSmart Intelligent Energy Saving Technology enables power on-off scheduling and power resume functions. This has also comes with the built-in hardware EDID emulation function which supports 4K at 60Hz. And also involving the new technology from HDMI CEZ and display monitoring functions. Uh, this is again our industrial grade robust and compact design which operates 24 bar 7 and uh, can be featured in various applications uh, for the digital signage. I would like to share some of our case studies uh, that's been successfully implemented across the regions starting with uh, Thailand where it's a bicycle sharing system and it's powered by our IPPC 0887RE. Uh, this actually works uh, 24 bar 7 operations and also it's IP65 front panel protected uh, which is easy for maintenance and high reliability and the key features is that this is display bicycle rental information in the system uh, that can be accessed with the RFID smart cards and the next application is for the intelligent transportation where we have designed a custom made uh, ODM board that is used for the smart parking meter and the key points is it's a rugged board designed for 24 bar 7 operations which is for easy for maintenance high reliability with long life cycle and the next success story comes to our diesel signage player which is SI58 video wall signage player and uh, you could see that this is for the digital menu board uh, this has been implemented in UK supermarkets uh, you can see that it's a it's a slim and rugged system design with coming with high reliability with long life cycle and of the best video performances and uh, the next one is also for the signage player which is SI60E this is coming up with 12 HDMI output and uh, this has been successfully implemented for the airport flight schedule board in airport of Norway and uh, this again goes for the 24 person operations easy maintenance high reliability with long life cycle and uh, the last one is for the factory automation application where we've been using our AMI 221 fanless system the key highlights is the equipment is designed and developed by iBase itself as an AOI solution for double-sided PCB dip solder inspection which is in our own factory in Taiwan and uh, you can see that it's going to be 24 bar 7 operational uh, and uh, of course it's high reliability with long lasting cycle uh, for the worldwide support we have our six subsidiaries starting from UK, China, Japan and also in USA and we have it in Italy and also in Singapore and iBase headquarters as I said before is located in Taipei, Taiwan and we have our three manufacturing plant also 
uh, near to Taipei. And uh, all our products are 100% made in Taiwan. If you have any questions or inquiries, you can always welcome to contact iBase. You can call us, also can drop an email to us. And also visit our webpage at www.ibase.com.tw. And we take this opportunity to welcome the distributors, system integrators and partners who are interested to work with iBase. Uh, we'd be delighted to work and mutually grow in the market. Thank you very much. Terima kasih iBase untuk informasinya. Jika Anda memiliki pertanyaan, silakan mengirimkan melalui QR Code yang tertera pada layar Anda dan para perusahaan Taiwan akan menjawab pertanyaan Anda dalam waktu beberapa hari ke depan. Selanjutnya perusahaan ketiga yaitu IMS. Di Taiwan IMS adalah pelopor dan pemimpin dalam industri digital smart water meter. IMS merancang dan membuat inovasi smart water meter untuk memberikan solusi pengelolaan, penggunaan air, dan smart building yang memuaskan di seluruh pasar global. Dari smart water meter, perangkat komunikasi IoT hingga aplikasi perangkat lunak, IMS memiliki lini produk yang komprehensif untuk membantu klien membangun jaringan IoT, yang secara signifikan dapat meningkatkan efisiensi pengelolaan air. Untuk selengkapnya, mari kita saksikan presentasi yang akan dibawakan oleh Eric Lin, sales representatif dari IMS. Ladies and gentlemen, good day. My name is Eric, sales manager from IMS company Taiwan. It's my pleasure to present our smart metering solution and technology to you today. It's hope my presentation today will bring you much information about smart water management. EMS is located in Tainan Science Park, Taiwan. All product design, manufacture, production are all based in Taiwan. With 30 years experience in water industry, we are proud to serve our customers from water utility, commercial, and industrial sector. Also, not only in Taiwan, our smart solution has been adopted in most Asian countries and as far as to South Africa. This is our certificate and award, including ISO 9001, RAS, ISO 17025, Pittsburgh New Innovation Award, and Taiwan Excellence. First, let me share the features of digital smart water meter from 15mm to 300mm. All sizes are available from household to industrial application. For WT series and TH series, all types are battery power, very sensitive to low flow due to R200 performance with built-in loggers and smart functions. If you want to apply data transmission, wire or wireless are available including IS485 MOBUS, 3G, 4G, LoRa, MBLT, and CFOX. First, let's look at built-in smart function from basic flow data to event alarms and the leakage information. For flow data, you can access totalizer, forward and the reverse totalizer, and the instant flow. For forward indication, it will show plus symbol. For reverse indication, it will show minus symbol. As for smart event alarms, if the meter is not working, it will show you all days. If the meter is reverse install, it will show you U days. If the meter has been tampered, it will show you H days. Once the battery power is low, it will show you battery symbol and the battery low days. Finally, leakage information. The smart meter will show you leakage days and the leakage amount as a pre-warning for you to check the pipe leakage and to prevent water loss. All this data will be displayed directly on LCD display of the meter. It's very simple for you to manage your water resource effectively. 
So far, we have understand the basic operation of the smart water meter. Let's talk about smart water solution. As we know, no single AMR solution can apply to all types of application. So we have redesigned the AMR solution to better fit various scenarios. First, for most utility and the water treatment plan, they need intense data logging and the frequent data transmission such as data log every minute and the receiving data per 10 minutes. So battery power consumption is very critical. We had designed low power consumption device and the battery package. From the slides, you can see WT series and the GTI 5 series combination. User can receive both flow and the pressure data upon a request from the server system. The operator of the water supply network can use the mobile device, such as smartphone or tablet, to check the real-time data effectively. As for smart building, we can see high-rise building, community, and single building. For each building type, we have designed different IoT solutions. For high-rise buildings, most water meter will be installed in each floor. If every water meter needs a data logger, it's not a cost-effective solution. So we had designed a repeater to collect maximum 40 water meter and send data to the concentrator. The concentrator can collect at most 250 water meter and send data via 3G or 4G protocol. So all you need is a SIM card to send 250 water meter data to the server system. This is what we call the submetering solution. One repeater called RMT can collect maximum 40 meters data and send data via mobile protocol to the concentrator, which is called GRN by 3G or 4G communication protocol. The building manager can just sit in the office and receive all water meter data and calculate the water consumption for each household. Every household can also check the daily, weekly, and the monthly water consumption and the leakage information on the cloud system. For individual housing, it's recommended to adopt low power wide area network. The most popular will be LoRa and the MBLT protocol nowadays. To adopt LoRa or MBLT solution, just connect water meter with LTI series or median series. User can receive data based on the fixed schedule. In addition to the hardware, let's look at the cloud software system, which is called iWater system. The iWater system is encrypted and based on Google server so it's highly secure and stable system. User will be provided with unique username and password, and they can access their water data anytime, anywhere, as long as they have mobile device with the internet connection. For most of our clients, they use smartphone or tablet to check the real-time flow and the pressure data. In a time of emergency, this data become very important for them to make critical decisions and uh, optimize the water network. If any pipe burst, which will cause lower pressure and the higher consumption, they can spot the location easily. If any complaint from the client, they can know where to increase the pressure and satisfy the client demand quickly. Here we can look at more photo of the system where iWater system can combine with GIS information, show historical data in time sequence, and observe 24-hour consumption trend easily. In summary, we hope to provide our client with accurate smart water meter and the integrate flow, pressure, and water quality data into one system. The user can receive real-time data to make quick decision. Also, we hope to make data application easily and turn data analysis into smart decision. Thanks for your time to listen to this presentation. I hope you can better understand about EMS smart metering solution and technology. More news will be available in YouTube and LinkedIn. If you have any question to discuss with me, 
you are welcome to send me email. If you are interested to promote EMS mentoring solution, please contact me. Let's work together. Thank you. Terima kasih EMS atas informasinya. Selanjutnya perusahaan terakhir yaitu Everfocus. Sudah selama 25 tahun, Everfocus telah menjadi mitra setia konsumennya. Terlepas dari evolusi teknologi yang cepat, gelombang produk baru, dan persaingan ketat di antara para pesaing, Everfocus selalu ada. Everfocus tetap dapat Anda andalkan dan terus menciptakan produk dan layanan yang berkualitas. Everfocus menyediakan berbagai solusi untuk membantu pelanggannya mengamankan lingkungan kerja. Misalnya transportasi pintar, gedung pintar, serta pengawasan cerdas yang dapat diterapkan ke berbagai pasar vertikal, seperti armada komersial, pusat perbelanjaan, kampus, dan sebagainya. Untuk selengkapnya mari kita persilakan presentasi yang akan dibawakan oleh Kate Chen, Sales Manager dari Everfocus. Today's roads are safer thanks to a wide range of state-of-the-art technologies developed by automakers. However, according to the WHO, 80% of cars sold in the world are not compliant with main safety standards. Only 40 countries have adopted the full set of the seven most important regulations for car safety. Let me explain what we mean by automotive safety. As we knew, there are two types of safety systems passive and active safety systems. The active safety systems plays a preventive role by providing advance warning or by providing the driver with additional assistance in steering or controlling the vehicle. For example, driving monitoring system DMS and blind spot detection BSD. Now, I will introduce you our smart fleet management solution, which includes the Taiwan Excellence Award product EIVP5600. For the users prefer NVIDIA platform, we also have NVIDIA platform products EIVP1570DE and EIVP1570VE. As for the front-end camera, we have our latest Made in Taiwan Value Series camera as our strongest minions. Last but not least, I would proudly introduce you our success story about transportation solution. In the past few years, we have cooperated with the biggest truck fleet supplier in Taiwan. This project successfully helped us step into the before cart market. The solution consists of our camera product line as well as the MDVR series. It protects the truck drivers and all the passengers, it includes the active safety system, blind spot detection. Everfocus's smart transportation solution gives our partners a safer driving experience thanks to the Intel AIH computing in automobile safety. Welcome to scan our QR code to learn more about our company and our amazing products. Thank you. Everfocus is a global top 50 award-winning professional security equipment manufacturer. We have been established since 1995, headquartered in Taiwan, with branches that can be found in the United States, China, and Japan. As a transportation solution expert, we provide systematic solutions. Five. Ever headquartered in Taiwan, total with branches that can be found in the United video States, analytics. China, and industrial PC. Customers can monitor and operate in real time via computer or mobile device. Everfocus is skilled at transportation solutions, optimized by OpenVINO Toolkit and Intel Movidius Myriad X AI module. Functions like crowd density detection and flow control are upgraded. AI NVR identifies or monitors the flow of people and communicates related equipment, enabling instant management of electronic gate, digital signage, and more, guarding comprehensively safety of passengers and on-site personnel. In logistic vehicle application, Everfocus's mobile NVR plays a crucial role. OpenVINO Toolkit and Intel Movidius Myriad X AI module uplift functions of driver fatigue and distraction detection to always keep drivers safe. With Driving Assistance System DAS, any accident caused by blind spot can be reduced to the minimum. Driver would receive instant notification once abnormal objects appear in the area 
Moreover, EverFocus's driving record data helps managers effectively control transportation status and improves operation efficiency, provides useful information for big data analysis. About EverFocus Bus Solution. People detection is designed based on OpenVINO Toolkit and Intel Movidius Myriad XAI Module 2. Same as blind spot detection, BSD. For police car, EverFocus's system operated through remote video real-time management. It strengthens the evidence collection, maintains the security of police officers on duty, and helps the management of data at the monitoring control center. EverFocus is capable of integrating products with third-party systems for wider application scenarios. For example, monitoring the using status of vehicle cars, map paths, etc. There are four models of EverFocus AI system computers, all equipped with Intel processors. EIVP5600, built-in 7th generation i5 and i7 processor, equipped with Intel AI Movidius module, supports 8-channel IP cam. EIVP1300, featured with Atom E3845 and E3825 processor, supports 4-channel IP cam. EIVP6600, built in Intel 8-core 9th and processor, supports 12-channel IP cam. Last but not least, our mini hero, Intel AI Box, has built-in i3 processor, supports 4 network cameras. Intel AI Transportation Solution can fulfill all requirements. We have outstanding quality in R&D expertise and development with excellent customer service to build the trust of customers around the world. Your safety, our focus. We are ever focus. EverFocus is already 25 years old until now. In the past of years, we earned the reputations in surveillance industry, and for now, we released a new product line, the Industrial PC, which is specializing design for video analyzed and edge computing. Here is our Industrial PC series, the EIVP. We including the latest NVIDIA Play from the EIVP 1570DE, EIVP 1570VE, as well as we have the Intel Play from the EIVP 5600. And move on to the camera part, we have the various camera including the different requirement. We design a different type of camera according to the function requirement. And the last part is our best selling product line, the mobile DVR. EverFocus is honored to introduce you our Intel flagship Playform product, EIVP-KBU-IV-V004. We also call it as EIVP-5600. The very first launch fell this industrial PC, which has a built-in Intel 7 generation, Core i5, i7 processor, and the Intel Movidius AI module which supports AI and delivers high computing performance. It has metal case and an elegant line heating conducting design, which is suitable for railway and transportation to use. EIBB5600 providing a channel PoE port to connecting to the network camera, also with one gigalamp port. The EIBB5600 is the best choice for a full-service automation network monitoring solution. By having all its ordinary products, EverFocus proudly provides our customer the best solution in smart transportation, smart campus, smart building, as well as smart retail marketing. This year, we have worked with our partner done the project in Taipei Mail Processor Center, the biggest mail processor center in Taiwan. It applies our industrial PC, mobile DVR, and network cameras. Our smart building solution successfully building the safety environment. That's all for today. As our slogan always say, your safety, our focus.
We are ever focus. Terima kasih ever focus atas penjelasannya. Sekali lagi kami ingin mengingatkan Anda, apabila ada pertanyaan Anda dapat mengirimkan melalui QR code yang tertera pada layar Anda. Para perwakilan perusahaan Taiwan akan menjawab pertanyaan Anda dalam waktu beberapa hari ke depan. Presentasi tadi mengakhiri acara webinar hari ini. Acara akan dilanjutkan dengan business matching yang akan dimulai sebentar lagi. Para hadirin sekalian yang sudah membuat janji, mohon agar segera masuk ke ruangan meeting online yang telah kami sediakan. Hadirin sekalian atas nama Taitra, saya mengucapkan terima kasih telah menyaksikan webinar pada hari ini. Terima kasih atas partisipasi Anda dan sampai jumpa di acara berikutnya. In the face of a worldwide pandemic, Taiwan has actively lent a helping hand to the world. Taiwan Global Anti-COVID-19 Pavilion. In this website, we've created an anti-epidemic products and solution providers section, where you can find information about suppliers or any particular business solutions. This section will help you reach out to more than 2,000 Taiwanese companies who can aid in your fight against the pandemic. In these videos, companies and experts discuss the latest innovations to help combat the pandemic. In this section, we put at your disposal the contact information of 20 Taiwanese top medical institutions. We also inform you about the main strategies used in Taiwan to effectively control and stop the spread of the virus. So please be sure to bookmark and share this website and remember to follow us on Facebook for our latest updates.